Good morning. Thank you very much for joining me on this uh, very cold uh, but very bright and sunny uh, Thursday morning uh, in uh, in Glasgow. Uh, it, the, sun, the sun is shining outside. Uh, we don't have a cloud in the sky. Let me just uh, double check. Not a cloud in the sky. Look at that. Uh, it's a bridge outside uh, over the River Cart in Glasgow. Uh, it is, I think, minus five degrees. But I am inside, so thank goodness for that. But uh, as you can see, oh, there's a bird. Uh, it's very bright and sunny, which is my favourite my favorite weather, if I'm honest. Uh, bright and brisk. Uh, now, you might see uh, over to my left-hand side, uh, right-hand side, uh, is uh, little Stevie. Just move him down here, put him on my shoulder. Uh, uh, what we're doing here today, me and little Stevie, uh, is we're going to be talking a little bit about the technology that you can use to step up your game in terms of video content online, whether it be on Zoom calls, on Team calls, making presentations uh, on uh, on platforms like this, like Crowdcast, or indeed anywhere that you have to uh, to put out content and you want to stand out from the crowd, where you want to uh, uh, be a little bit uh, a little bit more professional, a little bit slicker, and uh, and you want to impress uh, with uh, not just the uh, the technical bells and whistles, but with the content you want your content to stand out. You want to be memorable. So, with the help of some of these uh, little tips and tricks that I'm going to show you today, hopefully you can choose one or two of these and uh, find out how to do them. I'll show you as much as I can, uh, but uh, find out the ways in which you can integrate those into what you do uh, when you're online now. We know that uh, people have technical hitches. We know that uh, just yesterday, was it yesterday, the day before, uh, the uh, the lawyer in Texas, uh, he couldn't switch off the uh, the, the, the cat filter, uh, which didn't do a lot for his professional standing. Uh, uh, what I'm hoping to do here is show you ways in which it can enhance your professional standing and what you do and how you do it. And people will afterwards be remarking on the content that you gave and thinking about the, uh, the pitch that you made. So uh, with that, uh, let's get on. Uh, incidentally, Little Stevie here uh, was made with uh, simply recording on my, oh, let me just switch it out, uh, on my mobile phone. Me, uh, the phone was put onto a little tripod, recorded myself on a green background, imported that into Manicam, uh, and then uh, using the, uh, the chroma key feature, zoomed out the green. So it's just Little Stevie, as you can see here, uh, on a transparent background. Uh, so he's going to be dancing and waving uh, throughout the show today. Uh, so what uh, what is the main piece of technology that I, I recommend above all others? Well, first of all, it's Minicam. Minicam allows me to have uh, this little fella on screen. It allows me to have uh, this logo floating on screen here. It allows me to have all sorts of features going on. As you saw before, when I switched to uh, uh, the camera uh, outside, uh, then I can have multiple cameras uh, hooked up. I've got another camera here hooked up to my, uh, well, pointing at my desk so I could give a demonstration of, uh, of of anything that was on here if I really wanted to. In fact, while I'm here, I'll just, uh, let me just show you this. So I have a light on the other side of the room and this is the app that controls that. So I can be uh, switching that off, switch it on. You can see the, the, the light changing and I can I can move the, the color around to uh, to be whatever I want and I can change the uh, the intensity of that. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's a really handy thing to have. So I'll just put that down there for just now. Uh, but again, with Manicam, I can switch from uh, scene to scene. And what I'm going to show you now is actually exactly how I can do that. So if I just share my application window with you, which is Manicam, then you should be able to see uh, exactly what I see when I'm looking at Manicam. So I'll just close this here. So what you can see here is my Minicam uh, uh, program. Uh, in this main window here, this is whatever is being broadcast. Uh, and around me are all the tools to, uh, to to manage the content that's been in there. This is in blue because I can uh, click on here to uh, to move around Little Stevie on screen if I wanted to. Uh, if I wanted to, uh, to, to zoom in uh, to, uh, I'll choose Little Stevie again. If I wanted to zoom in, then all I need to do is uh, Click here, it gets a little bit bigger, gets a little bit smaller, and I, obviously I can do things like change the, uh, the, the adjust the uh, uh, the color and so on. I could even adjust the uh, the the resolution with which we are putting out content uh, by uh, choosing the, uh, the the tools at the top. And as you can see along here on the right hand side, uh, you can see the output from my microphone. If I do this, this will mute. And now you can hear me. Uh, and I can choose uh, additional audio devices. Uh, and of course, uh, I've got a built-in audio player. So if I want to, uh, to play audio, there's the devil went down to Georgia. I won't play too much of that because the copyright people will be on me. But 
the main area that you want to see is down at the bottom here where I have different scenes set up. So as you saw, I could switch to uh, the scene pointing out the camera pointing out at Glasgow. Uh, I've got a ticker tape of uh, uh, text running along the bottom there. I can switch that on, switch that off if I want to. Uh, I can switch to the camera pointing at my desk. Uh, I can switch to the still image, which uh, this is an event I did on Saturday night for the uh, the Miss America Foundation. Uh, and uh, we used a combination of still images. Uh, we pre-recorded content of performances that were shown on the night. Uh, and we'd uh, uh, pre-recorded videos uh, like this one here. So if I just show you... This. I'll just stop that there. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and, and of course, the uh, the video that we played at the beginning, which was my intro video. So if I go to uh, this here and press play. I'll just switch off the audio for that. But uh, on this video, uh, I can be talking over this, I can have music playing alongside this, and this would be out to, output to whatever show I wanted to uh, to get that out to. It can be Zoom, it can be, uh, uh, it could be Messenger for Facebook, it could be any call uh, at all that you're using video content in, uh, or of course you could record it. But the main thing I want to mention is that with all of these things, with all of these things, back to me, uh, with all of these things, the the content of all of those comes into ManyCam. So it might be audio, it might be stills, it might be video content, it might be your PowerPoint presentation. It might be that you've, you've, you've set up something like this where you've got uh, a, power, a, a video playing uh, and, uh, and that, that runs along there. So if I just play this, then you can have picture in picture, you could have multiple people on screen, you could have multiple elements on screen in different layers. Uh, so the ability to do that is obviously clear in ManyCam. These are all here, but what ManyCam does is it outputs uh, a video signal either uh, in, in one of three ways. You can be recording the content that you're uh, producing right here. So if I click on here, that would start recording. This is now recording on ManyCam as well as being output to, uh, to Crowdcast. Uh, when I record that, uh, it saves it in the gallery here. Uh, and that I click on here, that would start recording. This is now recording on ManyCam as well as being... There you go. So uh, I can... Number one, I can record in ManyCam. Number two, uh, I can stream out of ManyCam directly using RTMP to Facebook or YouTube uh, or Twitch uh, or Restream, uh, which is a custom feed that I've set up. Uh, Restream is, uh, is a service I use to distribute content to many, many, many places, including LinkedIn Live. Uh, and of course, uh, I can stream out directly to Crowdcast. And when I do it to Crowdcast, by RTMP, I can set the quality level to 1080p, which is uh, high high definition. Uh, so the quality that's going out uh, on Crowdcast is going to be the very best possible. And I might do that for uh, pre-recorded videos, or I might even be playing a movie, a movie premiere, that sort of thing. So all I need to do to start any of these is literally click on the button and it starts streaming immediately. Uh, now what we're doing just now is the third uh, we, we, we spoke about recording, we spoke about RTMP. Uh, what we're doing right now and what you're seeing right now is actually the third uh, way and, and the most common way that people use ManyCam, which is as a as a virtual webcam. Rather than choosing your webcam uh, like this uh, to feed directly to, uh, to, to Zoom, uh, for example, uh, what you're doing is you choose ManyCam to feed directly to Zoom and within ManyCam you choose whichever camera you want to feed into that. So you have a TV studio, if you like, uh, within which you can mix all those elements together and make sure that your content is as good as can be. Now, uh, I'm going to stop sharing uh, the, uh, the the ManyCam here. And what I'd like to do is show you some other elements, some other tools that I use to uh, to put content together, uh, whether it be for intro videos, uh, whether it be for graphics, and of course for, uh, for, for streaming out content. So uh, for this, I'm going to share my second screen here. I'll just move many cam I'll move this over to here so if I share my second screen here then what you should see uh, uh, first of all this is a program called Camtasia the Camtasia uh, is uh, is the tool with which I use to put together and edit video content so uh, this little video here is the just pause that there. So this is the, the little intro that I did that you saw at the start. 
Uh, and all I'm, uh, I need to do is to, uh, to have various video clips. I can stitch them together. I can drop in audio. I can have multiple tracks uh, set up here and I can have one overlapping with the other or joining onto the other. And there's a whole, whole list of uh, transitions and video effects and, uh, and images and text that I can put on screen to make that fancy. And the, the use of Camtasia, I have to say, is far, far simpler than you might imagine. If you imagine, uh, if you think about programs like Premiere Pro and so on, they're, there's a really steep learning curve uh, with those. But with Camtasia, it really is as, uh, as simple as you like. But the quality of the content coming out of here, you can be outputting uh, 4K uh, content. Now, in order to do that, you would need uh, a decent or relatively new PC that had a good P CPU and plenty of RAM. Uh, but uh, Camtasia, I would absolutely recommend for that purpose. Uh, now, the other program that I would use for putting together content is, of course, uh, Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop, you can use to, uh, to, to uh, not only make original graphics and logos, as you can see here, uh, but uh, you can use it to put together uh, graphics for your show that's going out. So if you want to uh, announce your show, uh, and as, as I did for uh, for this one here, then you can put together the, uh, the the graphic with the logo, the images, the text, the time, uh, the photographs of the people that are going to be appearing in your show, and that would be your thumbnail that you, you would use for any event that you were organising. And Photoshop is far easier than you would think, but if you're looking for something simpler, uh, then I would definitely recommend using Canva, uh, Canva.com, uh, and uh, there are lots of Lots of tutorials out there on uh, on online for uh, training on Canva, uh, and there's a free account on Canva. Uh, if you stepped up from the free account, then it's still really inexpensive. Uh, one last thing to, uh, to 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 show would be a restream. Uh, if I can just get to it here. So if I went to restream, uh, whenever I'm streaming content out, then it would go through here uh, and be distributed out to these various sources. So uh, YouTube, Periscope, which is Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitch, uh, and, and any other number of sources that you wanted to uh, distribute your content to. So all of these, you can be sending live video content out to uh, uh, as soon as you r produce the content. Uh, it's going to be relayed out to, uh, to all of those. So uh, Facebook Live, for example, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. So with all of these tools, uh, I'm able to put together a, a multitude of, uh, of, of events uh, and uh, uh, all of those elements come together to make the, uh, the, the technical impression uh, or the video impression on whoever is watching. Uh, so it's not just me, it's not just Little Stevie, uh, it's not just having logos on screen. All of these things can be put together and put together really simply. You shouldn't worry about the complexity of using all of these things. Clearly I have, but I love this sort of stuff. But if you think about the, the goal that you want to achieve, if you want to have your PowerPoint presentation uh, presented online uh, with built-in video playing with audio, uh, then absolutely that can be done and focusing in on the way in which that can be done within Manicam. Uh, so with that, I'm going to thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, thanks everyone who's, uh, who's watching uh, live or of course watching on replay and I hope you will join me again uh, very soon. So uh, with that, I'm just going to play it.